Hello, I'm Anthony Vaughn with the product marketing team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Serial Communication Interface, or SCI module, and show you how to configure it using Halcogen, TI's tool for generating initialization and peripheral driver code for Hercules MCUs. The SCI is a programmable interface that supports digital communication between the microcontroller and other asynchronous peripherals or devices. The module can be configured to communicate with a single external device or with a network of devices by using the multiprocessor mode. One of the most common uses for the module is to use it as a UART, or Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. The SCI module is comprised of separate transmitter and receiver blocks that may be operated independently or simultaneously. The transmit block uses the single SCI TX output pin to send data to the external peripherals or devices connected to the microcontroller. Similarly, the receive block uses a single SCI RX pin to receive signals from external peripherals or devices connected to the microcontroller. To ensure data integrity, the SCI can be configured to check for incoming data for breaks, parity, overrun, and framing errors. If one of these errors is detected, the module can generate interrupts to alert the CPU of the problem. Interrupts can also be generated by the receiver when new data is present and by the transmitter after data has been sent. The baud rate of the modules is programmable to over 16 million different rates through a 24-bit baud select register. The maximum SCI baud rate setting on most Hercules MCUs is 3.125 megabits per second. I am now going to use Halcogen to show you how to easily configure the SCI module to perform UART communication. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area on the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD included in all Hercules USB development stick and Hercules development kits. In this exercise, we are going to use Halcogen to configure the SCI module in UART mode with a baud rate of 9600, 8 data bits, no parity, and 2 stop bits. Then in Code Composer Studio, we are going to write some code that uses the UART driver generated by Halcogen to prompt the user to enter characters that will be echoed back to the PC terminal. For this exercise, we will need a Windows PC, either the TMS570 LS31 or RM48 USB stick, or either of the Hercules development kits. We will also need Halcogen and Code Composer Studio. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Windows Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New, Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all generated code to be stored. In Halcogen, the first step is to create a new project. We do this by clicking on File, then selecting New Project. In the New Project window, we select our family and device. For this example, we will select the RM4 family and then the TMDX RM48 USB device. Next, we enter the name of our project in the Name field. We will call this project SCI. We can also choose the directory where Halcogen will store its generated files using the Location field. The Tools Selection menu at the bottom of this window can be used to select the development toolset that will be used for the project compilation. Supported toolsets include the Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio, the Kyle ARM toolset, and the IAR toolset. We will leave this field set to Texas Instruments Tools since we'll be using Code Composer Studio. Next, we click the OK button, and Halcogen will start the new project configuration for us. In this view, we will see a block diagram of the microcontroller. We can navigate through Halcogen by either using this block diagram or by using the tabs located near the top of the screen. The next step is to go to the Driver Enable tab and enable only the SCI2 driver. We do this by selecting Unmark All Drivers and then selecting Enable SCI2 Driver. The next step is to go to the SCI2 tab and in the SCI Global sub tab, Enable the receiver interrupt. With this configuration, the SCI will generate a CPU interrupt every time data is received by the module. Next, we click on the SCI Data Format tab and ensure that the module is set up with a 9600 baud rate, 8 data bit length, 
and two stop bits and no parity. The final configuration to be made in Halcogen is to go to the VIM or Vectored Interrupt Manager module and enable channel 13. This will enable our SCI interrupt in the VIM module. Next we need to generate code. To do this we go to File, Generate Code. Halcogen will now generate all the startup and peripheral drivers that are needed to complete this exercise. The next step is to launch Code Composer Studio. It can be found in the Start menu under All Programs, Texas Instruments, Code Composer Studio. In Code Composer Studio, the first step is to create a new project. To do this, we go to File, New, CCS Project. In the New CCS Project window, we need to fill in some parameters to define our project. In the Project Name field, we need to type in the name of our project, which is SCI. This name needs to be the same as the one that we defined in Halcogen so that CCS will find all the files that we created with Halcogen. The next step is to change the device variant to Cortex-R and then change the device to RM48L950. Then we need to change the connection to Texas Instruments XDS100 V2 USB emulator. Then click Finish. This will create our project that will be viewable on the left side of the screen in the Project Explorer tab. The next step is to expand the project and delete the main.c file. Code Composer will create a blank main file, but we will not need it since we will be using the main function that we created with Halcogen. To delete this file, all we have to do is right click on it and choose delete. The next step is to configure some properties of our project. To do this, we need to right click on the top level of our project and select properties. In the properties window, we need to include all of our header files that Halcogen created into our project. To do this, we click on Include Options, then click on the Add button, then select the workspace area, and then add the Include folder. The next step is to click on the Debug, and then select RM48L950 Flash Options. In the Flash Options, we need to change the Erase Options to Necessary Sectors Only for Program Load. This will make the flash memory erase process much faster for this example. Then we click on Apply, then OK. The next step is to write some code for our application. First we need to open the sys underscore main.c file in our project by double clicking on it. This is the file that we created with Halcogen that contains our main function. As you look through this file, you will notice comments labeled user code begin and user code end. As long as we type all our code inside these comments, we will be able to re-import our project back into Halcogen and change the driver settings. Halcogen will not touch any code that we have entered between these comments. The first code that we need to enter is in the user code begin zero section. Here we need to include our sci.h header file. Next, we need to create a character variable in the user code begin one section that will be used to store the character that we receive from the PC terminal. The next step is to enter some code into the user code begin three section. We will enter this code inside our main function. First, we will enable our IRQ interrupts, initialize our SCI module, and then call the SCI send function that we created with Halcogen and use it to send the text please press a key out the SCI port. Then we will call the SCI receive function to get a character from the input of the SCI port. The final section in the main function is an infinite loop or a while one statement. The final section of code we must enter is in the user code begin for section. In this section of code, it handles all of our interrupts. The first interrupt we handle is the SCI notification. In this section, we will send out the last character that was received on the SCI port. Then we wait for the next character to be received. The next two interrupt handlers are there for the error signaling module interrupts, but for the purpose of this exercise, we will not put anything in them. We have now entered all the code that we need for this project. The next step is to open our terminal window that will be used for sending and receiving characters on the SCI port. The integrated XDS100 version 2 emulator on the Hercules USB stick and development boards contains a second channel that is used as a virtual COM port on the PC. You may use any terminal program for this portion of the exercise, but I will use an Eclipse-based terminal that can be integrated into Code Composer Studio. 
To launch the terminal, go to View, Other, and select Terminal. If you do not have this option, you may need to add the terminal plugin into your installation of CodeComposer Studio. For instructions on how to do this, please go to the wiki page shown below. After you have started the terminal plugin, click on the yellow settings box. In the settings window, select the COM port. The correct port is usually the highest number listed. Then check to make sure that the baud rate is set to 9600, the data bits is set to 8, the stop bits is set to 2, and that both parity and flow control is set to none. Then click on OK, and the terminal program will connect to the virtual COM port. The next step is to load and run our program on the MCU. To do this, select Run and Debug. After our program is loaded, we can run our program by pressing the Power on Reset button on the USB stick or running it via Code Composer Studio by pressing the green Run button. When the program runs, we can see the text Press a Key appear in the terminal window. As we press keys on the PC, we see that the terminal is echoing back the characters. We can also observe the SCI communication activity on the blue LEDs on the board near the USB connector. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on TI.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can download software like Halcogen, NowFlash, and the High End Timer Integrated Development Environment. You can also order development kits through the TI eStore from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer Support Forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs, in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted to this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The wikis contain useful information like development kit, board schematics, and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.